Pepsi-Cola, P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy. Calling Washington. United States Counter Spy. Especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the Flatbush Fagan. Another counter spy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola hits the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. That's right, you heard what they said. Two full glasses of sparkling Pepsi from one big 12-ounce bottle. You're getting an extra glass full. And what a delicious glass full. The most refreshing, delightful cola that ever tickled your taste. You can't top Pepsi's tangy flavor. And that big, big bottle saves you money. Goes twice as far. Pepsi's America's big, big favorite. And America's biggest cola value. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshments, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, to Counter Spy. Unfortunately, it is happening almost every day and night. In Detroit, the darkened windows of a store. The stealthy figures of two boys approaching. Then... Hands reaching in among the goods on display and escape. Or in Los Angeles, late at night, a suburban resident nears his home when suddenly from behind... (laughs) Young lawbreakers seem to be everywhere in St. Louis, Boston, Philadelphia, and in Brooklyn where juvenile gangs are organized on the highest level. Wait a minute, gang. Hold it. Hold it. Before we go out on the rumble against the Crescent, our president, Whitey Benson, wants to say something to you members of the Blue Jays. Now, Chris told you guys how some of them characters from the Crescent pushed one of our boys around this afternoon again. Now, this is the last time they get away with it, see? Tonight, we're putting them Crescents out of business. Like I told you when I organized the Blue Jays, you leave everything to Whitey Benson. We're going places, see? And we ain't going to be in this crummy cellar for long, neither. Soon, we're going to have a real... Classy clubhouse, pool tables and all. Us Blue Jays is going to end up the top dog outfit in Brooklyn. Pipe down! Pipe down! Pipe down! I ain't through yet. Steve? Yeah, Whitey? You and Chris take your boys and brief them for the rumble like I laid it out. Got you, Whitey. Okay. Now all you guys will get your instructions from my two ace men. We move in on a Crescent's clubhouse at 10.30. Tonight. It's 10.28, Whitey. All set, Steve. Yeah, all set. My boys have their bats and axes ready. Now quiet, you guys. We'll march on them in a minute. Steve, what about Chris? Don't worry about Chris, Whitey. He'll be on time with this guy. He's not due at the corner down there until 10.29. There he is now. Yeah. He's signaling us. Now, remember, Steve, if the cops come before we finish those crescents, scatter. I'll meet you and Chris back at the clubhouse after we tie this up. Right. 10.29, Whitey. Should I give Chris the signal? Yeah. Let's go. (whistles) Come on, gang. This is it. You'd 
two ace men of mine done a swell job tonight. And I finishes the crescents for good, huh, Whitey? Yeah, Steve. For real. Now they ain't got no more clubhouse, they'll come around begging to join us Blue Jays. <laughs> that was the main idea I had, Chris. Before we're finished, we're taking in every club in his territory. Now, the reason I had you and Steve meet me here at the clubhouse is extra special. What's up, Whitey? Tomorrow night, I got a little caper planned for just the three of us. What kind of caper? Something real special. Pull up chairs and listen close to what I gotta say. Tomorrow night, I'm breaking you two into the big time. You got everything straight, Steve? Yeah, I think so, Whitey. I stand here in a corner and keep my eyes open. If I see a flat foot coming, I give the signal to Chris in front of the store. That's it, Steve. Chris, let's go. Whitey. Listen, Whitey. What are you shaking in your pants about, Chris? I never did nothing like this before. Weren't you scared the first time? <laughs> I was never scared. Not my whole life. Uh, I just hope there won't be no trouble. Didn't I tell you the old dame who runs the store, she's got one foot in the grave already? Should take a squint of my zip gun and do just like I tell her. Oh, you, you won't have to use the gun, will you, Whitey? Look, Chris, stop acting like you was just out of kindergarten. Here's the store. Don't forget. Keep a watch for Steve's signal. I'll be out in less than five minutes. What can I do Get for you? Get back at a cash register and open it. What? This is a stick-up, Mama. I do like I tell you. You don't scare me, you rotten little hoodlum. You hoodlum, Mama, you... Mama, you got just two seconds to open that cash register. That toy gun you got? I'm not scared. You'll see what kind of toy this 22 is if you don't get started. Go on, move. I'm not moving an inch. I know kids like you. Sneaky cowards. Dirty little hoodlums. Bloppers. <laughs> Bluffer, huh? Bluffer, huh? I'm not sure you are. Whitey, what happened? Whitey, you shot her. Sure. She got out of line. She's waking up. Whitey, I thought you killed her. Get out of my way, Chris. What are you going to do? Why are you loading your gun again? I go. The old dame's got too good a tag on me. You know I'm on probation. I'll send me up for 20. Now, look out. Whitey, don't do it. Please. Come on. Let's get out of here. Mr. Harding, there's a Miss Catherine Griffin waiting to see you by appointment. Oh, yes. Come in, Miss Griffin. Well, Miss Griffin, nice to see you again. Let me move this chair closer. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Harding, you recall our talk last year during the National Police Conference in Washington. Oh, of course, Miss Griffin. Are you still attached to the juvenile court in Brooklyn? Hmm. In charge of the probation section now. Oh, and having a rough time. Very rough. I learned you were here in the New York Counter Spy Field Office, and I realized, Mr. Harding, you were a busy man, but I hoped you could spare me a little time. Well, certainly, Miss Griffin. Of course, Mr. Harding, juvenile delinquency in Brooklyn doesn't come under counterspy jurisdiction. Well, Miss Griffin, juvenile delinquency has ceased to be a local problem. Besides, we're always ready to lend a hand wherever we can, and from all reports, you people in Brooklyn have a big problem. Mr. Harding, we estimate there are at least 70 juvenile gangs with a membership of over 6,000. Not a pretty picture, is it? It gets uglier every day, Mr. Peters. Their numbers are increasing and their crimes get worse. They've gone from gang wars to thievery to murder. Why, just two days ago, a store owner in the Red Hook section was shot by 22 caliber bullets. The gun was later found in a vacant lot, a homemade weapon. A zip gun, they call it. Yes, I think we have one of those right here. Sent to us for inspection. Mm -hmm. See, made out of a block of wood, antenna wire, a door lock, and frame. Uh, and a lethal weapon it is. In the last month, we've arrested five boys carrying guns like that. Each boy was under 17. One was only 13. Our main problem is the unhealthy fear these boys have for officers of the law. 
Miss Griffin, that unhealthy fear you mentioned interests me. When a boy joins a gang, he's taught to hate and fear policemen. They immediately become his mortal enemies. And naturally, the kings of the underworld become his heroes. Mm. I call it negative hero worship. That's one of the big obstacles in our path. The moment these boys see a police uniform, they run. Well, Peter, Miss Griffin has just given me an idea. Let's take advantage of this negative hero worship and prove to these youngsters there's a difference between a hero and a heel. Traffic like this. There's this sucker walking toward us. Get ready, Steve. Right, Marty. Bump him so hard he takes a good flop. Chris. I'm listening, Whitey. No matter what, you stick here in the doorway. Right. Watch how this sucker is handled. Oh, oh, gee, mister, I'm sorry I didn't see you. You look where you were going, you won't have to be sorry. Steve, I told you to watch out, didn't I? Oh, yeah, Whitey, but mister, don't mind this jerky pal of mine. He's always bumping into somebody. I told him, man, I was sorry. Here, mister. Let me give you a hand. Thanks, kid. You ain't hurt, are you, mister? No. Got to tell your little pal to keep his eyes in front of him. Someday he'll bump into the wrong guy. <laughs> Someday he'll bump into the wrong guy. Hey, you characters, how you like that for a laugh? Pretty good, huh? <laughs> hey, with some of that dough, we can fix up this club room, huh, Whitey? <laughs> how much in the wallet, Whitey? Eighty bucks, Steve. Eighty? You sure done it smooth, Whitey. You gotta have the touch to roll a sucker smart, Chris. The touch. Light and easy, so he never knows what hit him. I can pick him, huh? Just the way the schmo was dressed, I could tell he was loaded. It's like a talent. You gotta be able to spot... Whitey. Hey, only not twice. They didn't give the right high sign. Hey, maybe it's the cops, Whitey. What are we going right to do? Right down, boss. Come on, come on, open up. Whitey, it is the cops. I told you to fight down. I know you're in there. Open up or I'll bust the door down. You guys keep fighting. I'll do the talk. I'll give you one more second. Open the door. Okay. Keep your shirt on. I'm coming. All right, smart guy. Let's have the wallet. Wallet? What wallet are you talking about, mister? I suppose the next thing you're going to say is you don't know me. That's right. Never saw you before. What about your pal here, this one? Me? You mean me, mister? I don't mean your grandmother. She never saw you before either, mister. Did you see? No. No. You're the two little punks who rolled me on 12th Street 15 minutes ago. Us? Roll? Uh Uh-uh. Got us mixed up with somebody else, mister. This here is the Blue Jays club room. We was having a meeting. We've been here all the time. Right, Chris? Oh, sure. We've been here all the time, Whitey. You see, mister? Come on, hand it to the wallet. I told you, mister. We... I <laughs> can't hand it off. Get my arm! Hand the wallet, honey boy, with the 80 bucks. Oh, I'm going to bust my arm. Stop, will you? When I get the wallet... Stop, look! Well... Okay, okay, only let go, will you? Let go! More like <laughs> it. That box right here. <laughs> I walk on the door. Because I got it right here in my hand. What? Huh? you got to have the touch to roll a sucker smart, Whitey, the touch. Light and easy, so he never knows what hit him. Whitey, he was outside all the time. He hurt. The next time you and your boys try a roll, you better be sure of the mark you pick out. For all you chumps know, I might have been a cop just laying for you. Then you're not a cop? Well, I look like one. No. Who are you? If you looked at the cards in my wallet, you'd know who I am. Dutch Malloy. Dutch Malloy. You hit Dutch Malloy from that Chicago mob? Is there another one? Dutch Malloy? Chris, how you like that? Of all the guys that pick Dutch Malloy, out of everybody walking the streets of Brooklyn, Whitey picks Dutch Malloy to roll. <laughs> of all the guys, Dutch <laughs> Malloy. Cut it out, Sal. Help me out, fix your head in. What's the matter, Whitey? No sense of humor. So I make one mistake. So what? Anybody can make a mistake, can't they? You want to stay in this business, you don't make no mistakes. Not even one. Hey, hey, Dutch, what are you doing here in Brooklyn? You're going to be around long, Dutch? A couple of weeks, Chris. Why? Well, if, if you had some extra time, maybe... 
Maybe you could uh, come around and give us some pointers, huh? Some tips on the ins and outs of the business. Hey, what do you want to bother Dutch with this kid stuff for? Dutch is a busy guy. Ain't you, Dutch? No, Waddy. Not too busy. You got a lot to learn, a whole bunch of you. And I'm going to take personal pleasure in teaching each of you how things should be done right. Okay? In just a moment, we'll return to Counter Spy. Brought to you by Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola hits the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? More and more, among fellows and girls, among mothers and dads, you hear that sane and sensible question why take less when Pepsi's best? No budget, no allowance ever had a better friend than tangy, sparkling Pepsi Cola. Because one big 12-ounce Pepsi bottle gives you two delicious drinks. That's twice as much tangy taste. Twice as much delicious Pepsi to go just twice as far. That's why more and more families say, why take less when Pepsi is best? Yes, families like yours and mine. Families all over America. They're all saying, why take less when Pepsi is best? Pepsi Cola hits the spot, tastes terrific when you're hot, more and better than the rest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Today, tomorrow, always. Get America's biggest cola value. Take home a carton of six big, big Pepsi bottles. Insist on Pepsi at the store. And say Pepsi at the fountain. Say Pepsi at the stand. Say Pepsi. Whenever you reach for refreshments, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, back to Counter Spy. Two weeks later, a man cautiously enters an all-night drugstore and heads for a phone booth to make a call. This is Dutch Malloy. Listen. 8.30 tomorrow night. Bench at the front end of the DeKalb Avenue subway station, downtown side. Got it? DeKalb Avenue Station, 8.30 tomorrow night. Especially those two kids, Chris and Steve, look up to me. Dave, honestly, it makes me sick inside the way they think that Dutch Malloy is such a hot shot. Well, that's why you're there, Peter. I know, but they're not really bad kids. It's the leader of the Blue Jays who's all the way off the track. That Whitey Benson is the rotten apple in the barrel. Yes, our files show Whitey has a bad record. He sold all the other kids a bill of goods. Made them cop haters. He gets the others to follow him either through admiration or strong-arm tactics. Till I came into the picture, Whitey's word was law. But I know the punk is yellow. Well, then your work's cut out for you, Peter. Show Whitey up to the others for what he really is. That's not going to be such a sink. Well, first you'll have to win the complete confidence of all the other boys. If I can, in time. Whitey has planned a job for them to pull in another day or so. Oh? A bicycle shop on 10th Street. Whitey has it set for them to steal three of the bikes that the owner of the shop has displayed on the sidewalk outside. Oh. See the spot I'm in, Dave. I can't let those kids steal the bike. Oh, of course you can, Peter. But maybe there's a way of out-masterminding Whitey Benson at bicycle steering. What's the matter, Whitey? Nothing, Dutch. Maybe you don't like the way I'm handling this operation, huh? No, I... Only me and Chris and Steve could do it without bothering you. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just lending you guys a hand. Of course, if you want me to step out... Oh, then... no, Dutch. We don't want you to do that. We're all for what you're doing for us, huh, Chris? Sure, Steve. How many chances do you get to learn from a real professional like Dutch Malloy? Okay. Now, remember. Watch me through the store window. 
You know the signal. Yeah. When you wipe your face with your handkerchief, we grab the bikes and start pedaling. See you back at the club room later. Well, mister, how can I help you? Uh, leaving. Leaving? I'm, uh, interested in some bikes. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, any particular type? I, I, I got all types here. Well, I saw those three that you have on the sidewalk outside the store. Huh? Hot tonight, huh? Yeah, yeah, mighty muggy. Yeah, I guess we'll have some rain. My corns are acting up. Yeah. <laughs> Soak this handkerchief right through. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about bicycles. Yeah. Uh, what's the price on all three of them? All three? Well, now I'm, I'm, I'm trying to clear out my stock, and I can, uh, well, I can let you have all three for... Uh, hey, those boys out there. What's the matter? They're, they're getting away with my bike. Now, hold it, buddy. Hold it. Let go of me. Let go of me. What are stealing me bike? Now, take I, it easy. I got to stop They're them. not stealing those bikes. I'm buying them. Uh, what? Those kids are friends of mine. I'm buying those bikes for them. What holy joke! How much are they? Oh, how much? Oh, that's different. Well, they're uh, mm, uh, thirty, uh, five dollars a piece. Mm. That's a hundred and five bucks for all three, right? Uh, yes, sir. That's right. For one hundred and five skins. <laughs> hundred and five. Here you are. Thank you, Mister. <laughs> You know, those bikes are a real bargain at that price. I know. They're practically a steal. Good work, Peters. You must have convinced Chris and Steve, all right. $105 is a high price for being convincing, Dave. Put it on your expense account. Under what? Petty theft? By the way, how is Whitey Benson taking it? Like a slow burn, Dave. If you ask me, I don't think Whitey's going to be satisfied with sitting on the sidelines much longer. Your job then, Peters, is to expose Whitey as a coward right in front of his ace, man. Right, Dave. But I'll have to wait for just the right setup. There, you two. Take a look at that. A rod? A real one? Yeah, 38. Where'd you get it, Whitey? From a friend. Picked it up in Germany. I bought it from him. Well, what do you want a gun for, Whitey? For our next job. But, Whitey, Dutch says only a sucker carries a gun. Remember? Dutch says if you're caught Dutch with a says, gun... Dutch says. Dutch says. I'm sick of that Dutch stuff. Oh, but Dutch knows, Whitey. He's been around. Well, I've been around, too. Plenty. And I was okay with you guys before he come in the picture, wasn't I? Now I'm going to show you guys how I can handle a heist as good as he can. Better. Anybody here say I can't? We're not saying you can't. Why well, do you... Well, button only... up and listen if you want to stay being my ace man. There's a warehouse across the street from Pier 13. They got a bunch of radios piled up in there. And it's a pushover to get in through a side door. I'll pull on that job at 11 tonight. Got it? Oh, uh, yeah, Whitey. Sure. Steve? All right, Whitey. Whatever you say. And get this to your heads, both of you. Dutch is out of the picture. The feeder of you let on a Dutch about this job tonight, so help me, I'll take this gun, I'll blow your heads off. All right, you two. Follow me. Radios are piled over the other end of the warehouse. All right. What's the matter, Whitey? The watchman, Chris. Coming this way. You better beat it before... I'll take care of the watchman. Come on, behind this crate. Here he comes. I'll get him from the back when he goes by. You reach, right? Now, fold your hands on top of your head. Keep him falling. Okay. <laughs> now, turn around. Hello, Whitey. Dutch. You can put your gun away. How'd you get here? Didn't I tell you only a sucker carries a gun? What are you doing here? Who told you? Oh, Steve, Chris, they told you, huh? You monkeys told them, didn't you? Whitey, we thought we'd better. You're dirty, stinking double cross. Don't take it out on them, Whitey. Tackle somebody your own size. Them to cross me up, the little yellow bellies. Some stunt to pull on a pal. What do you mean, pal? You're nobody's pal, Whitey. You're strictly out for yourself. You're just pulling this job tonight to prove you're a big shot, but you're just a cheap little four-flusher. Yeah? Yeah. 
even told these kids you're only 18, but you're 21, five years older than any of them. You didn't have the guts to go up with the big boys, so you got yourself a bunch of kids to use to push around. Oh, Shut up. The truth dig too Shut up, I set her up. Fill your face with lead. Right here. You haven't got the guts to tackle me. I know you haven't. Yeah, well, ask Steve. Ask Chris. Ask him how I drilled that dame last month without even blinking an eyelash. Talk, talk, Whitey. That's your idea of guts, killing an old lady who couldn't fight uh, back. Uh, All right, drop the gun. Can you drop it or you end up fighting on your face? I'll kill you. I'll kill you. All right, I'll do it the hard way. I'll get a gun, Dutch. We'll take care of the gun, Chris. What, Dutch? These are friends of mine, Steve. Come on, Whitey. Up on your feet. <laughs> Here he is, Mr. Harding. All yours. Harding. That's right, David Harding, <laughs> chief of the United States Counter Spies. Counter Cops. Counter Spies. Conway. Yes, Mr. Harding. Take Whitey Benson along. Right. Turn him over to the police to be booked for murder. Yes, sir. Okay, big shot. Get moving. Why don't you pinch him? That's Malloy. He's a guy you want to grab. Never mind that, squealer. Okay, Conway. Right. Give me a break. I don't get this. You're in with the cops, Dutch. Fellows, you've just had one surprise. Your hero, Whitey Benson, turned out to be a heel. Now, here's another surprise for you. Your friend Dutch Malloy isn't Dutch Malloy at all. Not Dutch. He's my assistant, Harry Peters. The real Dutch Malloy's been in our custody for a month. A cop, Chris. And we thought he was a right guy. A cop. So now you two know what I am. You put me down as a wrong guy. Is that it? Well... We didn't know a cop who could be... Well, a right guy? Is that what you're trying to say, Chris? Yeah, I, I guess so. The cops are just like anybody else once you get to know them. The trouble with you boys is you never, never gave yourself a chance to know them. They're more on your side than hoodlums like Whitey Benson. You found that out tonight, didn't you? If it hadn't been for Peters here, you'd have ended up in real trouble. And behind bars. You mean you're not arresting us? No. But you two still have some things to settle, uh, those bicycles. We... We still got them. Yeah, Mr. Harding. But we'll give them back. You can't do that now. Oh, but... A Dutch, or uh, rather Mr. Peters here, paid for them. You two boys are going to keep those bicycles. But you're going to work to pay for them. What do you mean by that, Mr. Harding? You're both going to get straightened away with the law. And then I hope you can prove to other kids like you that a cop isn't such a bad guy after all. Gee, thanks. You're a swell guy, Mr. Harding. When your friends drop in, be generous, but be thrifty, too. Serve plenty of delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle gives you not just one sparkling glass full, but two. Get a carton of six and serve 12 delicious drinks. Yes, Pepsi is America's biggest cola value. You get twice the tangy taste, twice the refreshment, twice the Pepsi. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Pepsi-Cola hits the spot, two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen on Thursday for the exciting counter-spy case of the hot car killer. From a hideout high above New York, a master criminal brain moved human beings and stolen automobiles like pawns in a chess game of life and death. For the blazing facts in this case, I invite you to tune in on Thursday, day after tomorrow, for the case of the hot car killer on counter-spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York, was directed by Leonard L. Bass, dramatized by Edward Adamson, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer, with music by Jesse Crawford. Counter Spy is a Philip H. Lord production for Pepsi Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi, ice cold tonight.